All right, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming today. This is a, a talk that I did at Dev Day Singapore. Um, Alec asked me if I had a talk, and it just happens that I do have a talk. So a lot of people here might know some of the things I'm going to go over, but there's probably some things that you might know, might not know. So um, maybe I can teach you something new. So Xamarin Forms is easy, um, but the problem is easy. Um, can be bad because with Xamarin Forms it's easy to go in and start um, putting in stack layouts on top of stack layouts and getting this really um, deep and nested control hier hierarchy um, and you don't have to learn it you can just jump in and you can start playing around with it um, so you need to be aware that you're still on a, a phone with limited resources um, and Xamarin form XAML is not like WPF. WPF XAML is quite forgiving. Um, they have to support many platforms and the layout system isn't as mature as say the WPF one. With forms, uh, we always build pages uh, with performance in mind. We think about it from the start. So given that, there's some performance tips that I have. Um, list view cell recycling. So basically when you have a list view um, previously every time you had a new cell it would create a new cell and it would um, render that whole cell and put that into into your list. Um, now uh, if you enable list view uh, cell recycling it'll take um, your existing cells and it will recycle them when they're not used. Uh, it'll just update the binding context. So that gives a huge performance improvements. Uh, it's disabled by default, so retain element is uh, enabled um, by default, so you actually need to go in and enable uh, the recycling. Do they have plans to make that default? Maybe, yeah. Um, and then the data template selector. Uh, the data template selector is, is important when you have two different types of views, but you still want to support the cell recycling. Um, so here, can you imagine you have like a, um, a chat window which is an incoming message and an outgoing message? These are two different types of um, views, but you still want to have that cell recycling for those different types of views. You don't want to relay out everything the whole time. So in this case, you've got your incoming data template and you've got your outgoing one, um, and they're still supporting um, the cell recycling. So XAML C, um, previously um, XAML was parsed and inflated at runtime. With XAML C uh, turned on, it's now done at compile time. So it's faster, uh, smaller app size, because previously all your um, XAML used to get installed with the application or installed or bundled with the application. And you also see uh, XAML errors at build time. Um, so We've done some metrics that Matthew from MFractor has kindly uh, put together for us. Um, and we found that it's about five times faster. So um, when it's um, done at runtime, you can see here, it's about 600. Um, down here, it's about, um, I mean, 20% of the speed. So it's about uh, five times faster on average. But it does increase the build time a little, about 15 seconds per app. Um, and as I said, the data is thanks to Matthew. You'll see soon. Is it still on, is it now on par with um, the traditional code for? Yeah, it's yeah. pretty close to the code. Pretty much be. Yeah. Because they're doing the same code basically. Yep. They um, strip it out and strip out the XML and replace it in the file. Right. So yeah. you see, like, your C sharp will get that file, which is the same what they're yep. replacing the yep. XML with. Yeah, so it'll, and there's nothing that's parsed and inflated at runtime, so it is actually the same as having code. Um, so performance, um, a big one with Xamarin Forms is simplifying your layout and reducing uh, nesting. Um, and to do this, you have to know your controls. So, for example, this person here is trying to do spacing and padding um, between these labels, and they've got a stack layout and they've put in all these content views. When, if they had just known that you could what your uh, well, stack layout had padding and spacing, then they could have reduced this huge amount of nesting. Um, so things like avoid relative layout, that's something that you need to know. Um, the grid view helps reduce uh, nesting and layout cycles. Um, don't put a list view inside a scroll view. Use the header and footer on the list view. So a lot of people will try and um, simulate a header and footer by putting a list view inside a scroll view. But what that does is it causes extra layout cycles. Um, don't use nested stack layouts when you can use a grid. 
and don't use the grid when you can use a stack layout. So <laughs> <laughs> when you've got a simple list, then use uh, a stack layout because the calculations are, um, they don't have to do as many calculations as grid. But as soon as you've got a complex layout, when you have things spread across um, multiple areas of um, your view, then a grid can really help with that. Um, and don't use stack layout uh, as a list view. Um, so just putting items in a list view is not, I mean, putting items in a stack layout is not a list view. List views are their own unique beast, which um, I highly recommend um, using. Use star and static widths on a grid. Uh, prefer using layout options fill, um, which are the defaults. So now we can actually talk about the Xamarin Forms layout system. So the layout system is in two cycles. There's an invalidation cycle. So you have like a, a label where the text change, this label's size becomes invalidated, um, and then it goes all the way out of the chain um, until it gets to, I mean, primarily most of the time until it gets right to the, um, the root of the hierarchy. And then there's the layout cycle. Uh, so just bear in mind these are like Xamarin Forms internals. You don't actually have to know these to, to do Xamarin Forms, but it's just good to have an understanding of how things are working so we can um, understand why all these um, recommendations are given to us. So every, so this is Xamarin Forms code base. Um, so like I said, you will never have to even see this um, or worry about it really. The, the visual element, which is the base class of the layouts, views and pages, all have an event handler um, measure invalidated. Um, every time a child is added to a layout or a page, a on-child measure invalidated, um, well the on-child measure invalidated event is subscribed to by its parent layout or page. Um, when a child element um, size is invalidated, this method gets called there is conditional logic here, and then it actually calls its own event, which will then bubble up to its parent. So basically, this is what it looks like. You've got a page, you've got your child measure, which is on the stack layout, and then all these children. So you've got your full chain up here. Obviously, they need to be connected because they are connected um, when they're laid out. So this label here, the text changes. Um, it becomes invalidated calls measure invalidated, then it goes up here to the stack layout, it becomes invalidated and calls measure invalidated and goes up to the page. So that's part one, the invalidation. Part two is the layout cycle. So basically, um, before it lays out your view, it actually measures it, so it measures all the children, so um, the views can make uh, decisions on how things should be laid out. This can happen multiple times, like sometimes it can happen uh, three times. Or if you have nested layouts, it can happen even six times. So it can happen a lot. Um, and then it, it's laid out. So basically, your layout cycle looks like this. The invalidation part, and then you measure, and then you lay out. Except measure can happen multiple times. So why do we care? Uh, because we can hack it. So this is your normal layout cycle. Um, it is possible that we can stop. So you've got all these events going on here. It is possible that we can stop our layout cycle from um, going ahead or from um, getting out of control. <coughs> yeah, so I mean, there is only a few ways to actually do it. going to be big. I've seen books from the view model point of view stop the, the I notify bubbling up yeah, it's only f so this is from the view. So it, it's actually um, it just depends on how you put the view together. So if we go, this is the Xamarin Forms code base. Why is that so? P can anyone read that? I don't know why we can't actually read that over there. What if we go like that? Michaela. Oh. All right, still, it's better. So this is the Xamarin Forms code base. Basically, I've got my um, Xamarin Forms application that I created, and then I've just added in the components, or well, the Xamarin Forms um, parts that I needed. If you do ever want to do this, 
Um, you can basically just add Xamarin Forms to your application, but you just need to build it um, in its own solution first, um, and then you can add it to your application. Um, XAML C won't actually work unless you add all the XAML C um, projects as well. But just looking at this application over here, no, let's not look in Xamarin Forms. So just um, for this example, we've got a stack layout. Stack layout with lots of labels in it. Um, and then one label which down here is called counter label. Um, and then in the code behind here, every 500 milliseconds, um, we're incrementing our counter and we're changing the text. So uh, every 500 milliseconds, that counter label is becoming invalidated. Um, so if we look at our grid, it's pretty much the same. Um, we've got some row definitions and some column definitions. Um, so we've just basically got all our labels listed down again, and then we've got this counter label, which is changing. Um, so let's just actually run this and see what it does. So if I open up, um, say, understanding stack layout, and then you can see that the count is going up, yeah. but what you can also see is this count here going up. So it's going up and up and up. So 263 times um, our layout child into bounding region. Um, 117 times for invalidate measure internal. Uh, you, this is uh, in the code base yep. of Xamarin Forms. So no, normally you wouldn't be able to get into these unless you actually linked up the code base. Yep. Um, but Xamarin have this uh, performance class. And I just uh, went through to all the... <coughs> all the places that I had an interest in and then just use their performance class. Yeah, so, um, and then I ended up stealing them from the class for other things too. Um, so now the application is still running. If I go to the application output and I go back and then I go to the grid layer, you can see that the counter is going up. But this is not moving at all, it's still at 13. So we're not doing any layout cycles. So that, that all those um, arrows that I showed you, none of that's actually happening, which is very interesting if you're um, interested in performance in Xamarin Forms. But if I go back into the grid, and just say I change this uh, height to auto, go back in, you see that it starts going up. So what actually happens there is um, because we just got an auto height there, Xamarin Forms has to relay out when one of their child changes. Even if it's not going to be a different layout, they don't actually know um, what's happening there. Um, so that's why they recommend it. Actually, if I put a static height in, the behavior of a static height will be the same as a star. 
yeah. Um, but I can show you something else that's interesting. So that's not going up there. So I'm going to change this, just changing this grid back to a star there. And then on this label, I'm going to get rid of the label. And I'm just going to create some like um, dynamic layout where on this box that I have here, which is a navy uh, box, I'm going to change the width of it dynamically. Um, but just note it's still inside the star columns, um, row and columns. I'm just going to change this. So we can see that um, that's going up and down, um, but even though it's still in the stars, it's still um, it still actually went up to 262 there. I'll answer that in a second. Um, do you know why? It's because I had to change these horizontal options. So if I change this horizontal option back to fill. So what was that? Just wondering because um, every object has a both height and width. Um, you changed it to auto, and only the potentially the width of the object was actually changing. Yet it still relayed out the whole cell. Well, in this, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, if any of the one, any of it's auto, and just the width changes, then it actually in the layout system they don't say that a width or height's changed. Um, they don't have that information. So there would be some optimizations available. If they so change it, yeah. Between width change and height change. Yeah. The yeah, basically at the moment it's just size changed. Yeah. So there is definitely an optimization they can do there. But if I change that back to fill, I mean, the problem is our blue um, bar isn't going um, small and big anymore. So we've broken it, but we're not getting our layouts. But that's not going to work. So we do need to take this back to start. But if we just put this in the content view, So we still have our effect of it um, opening and well getting the width changing, but our um, count isn't going up. Because basically what's happening here is, because the content is fully constrained, um, like if it changes size it doesn't actually matter because of the, the width and the height there. Um, the box view invalidates but it goes to the content view, it invalidates but then the grid um, cuts the invalidation off at that point. Yeah, so it's pretty interesting things to know. One other thing I did discover um, about the layout system was that the grid isn't as fast as I thought it was originally. It's only when I started actually measuring things. Um, because if we go back to this thing here, even when we first create a grid and everything sort of lays out, it still actually does, uh, where are we? It still actually does this measure. So I didn't know that it was doing the measure, but it, no, even if you have all stars and static widths, it still does the measure. Um, and then it does the layout. So the grid isn't as fast as I thought it was. So it can definitely be fixed. Um, so I guess that kind of like, now it makes sense why 
Jason is telling us all the things, reduce nesting, don't change the defaults of horizontal options or vertical options because fill is good, use grid but avoid auto, um, and don't use a stack layout uh, as a list view. Um, and a lot of those things, once you know this, will actually start to make sense. Um, when if anyone doesn't know, the grid is a really um, awesome control. Actually, no, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, I'm assuming a lot of you people already know about these sort of basic pages. Don't use the carousel page, it's slow. Um, use the carousel view, which is the new Xamarin um, Forms recommendation for views. Stack layout's good if you're just stacking straight down, um, but don't start, don't use them for any sort of nesting, don't use them as a list view. Uh, the grid is awesome because of the way that it allows you to do layering. Um, and scroll view is, is really good too. So if you're building a Xamarin Forms application, I like to think uh, it's basically two things. It's either like a, um, a page of information or it's a list. So you're either using a list view or you're using a grid and a stack layout. Um, but sometimes if you've got a smaller device and you want to support those smaller devices, you can put it in a scroll view, you grid and it can actually, um, you can have some scrolling there just so people can scroll down if they've got their little screens. Um, so definitely recommend um, not forgetting to put your things inside a scroll view. Uh, and stay clear of the relative layout just because the um, complexity cost on that is huge. So the grid is awesome. It's not as difficult to use. Um, it's nearly as easy as a stack layout. And it works well with XAML. Uh, and it can be used to create overloads, uh, overlays and advanced UIs. And it's easy to reduce your nesting. Uh, and as I showed before, it's easy to reduce your layout cycles. So we can have a look at the grid. Oop, what did I do then? If anyone's used Grid before, you probably know about all this stuff. But um, one of the secrets that I didn't know that um, Jesse actually taught. Oh, why is my preview window not working? What happened? Oh, there it is. One of the really awesome things that you can do with the Grid is you can actually um, get. You can actually use it to do percentage widths. So you actually see how I've got this um, star, but I've got a number in front of it. So star's just not a normal star. Star actually calculates the numbers in front of the star, and then it'll actually divide the total width by them. So you can actually, um, just say you have a page where you want a bit of space there and you want a lot of space there and then a little bit of space, you can actually do that with a grid. Um, one awesome thing that you can actually do um, with the grid is it's really easy to do layering. So just say I've got this um, red um, box view here and I've got this uh, blue box view and I want to put this in the middle. I can create like a grid with a row definition. Ooh, it's going to be height. So I can just change this, changing this box view, which is the red one, <coughs> making that box view, take up my whole um, view here. So if I just zoom out a little bit, and then if I can just do this blue one, syntax error, 
Oh. See Infractor there? Cool, so now I've um, got my um, red box view and I've got my blue box view overlaid on it. What I can even do is I can actually um, just add, easily add a new one. Change the column to the zero. Make it an image and do the source. This is the um, Xamarin Reforms preview, by the way. It's pretty cool. Is anyone using it? I thought it. <coughs> yeah, it's um, it's getting better. I don't know. I haven't tried it. Okay, so but it's if you subclass anything below the content page, it'll work. I'll find out soon enough. Anyway, what have I got in here? So the cool thing about a grid is it's fairly easy to put together views and know that they're going to be, well, and they're not going to cause too many layout cycles if you're using your, your correct um, configurations on your width and your height. But there's definitely uh, improvements that the grid can do, so you should uh, watch this space. I've got something that I want to build, but I just haven't had time to build it yet. Um, and as I mentioned before, the list view, um, sorry, cycling is awesome. Always use a list view, especially, um, I mean, I reckon about 50% of the apps, or the pages that I build in an app, always have a list view with sorry, cycling, or even over. Um, and it can make your app super fast. Um, the data template selector and when your binding context changes in one of your recycled uh, cells don't change the layout if you want something with a different layout use the data template selector but don't go adding in uh, removing controls so if you come back from like a, a .NET background um, with web forms you're gonna like be wanting to move controls up and down and all that sort of stuff but um, it's better just to not do it if you want good performance so I'm going to be putting up a, a blog post soon with all that sort of detail. I'll probably like have a bit more detail, so just uh, keep an eye out for it. Jason Smith's uh, Xamarin Forms performance uh, tips. This um, blog post actually is a really good list if you want to um, get a quick hold of what he actually said in that video. Um, performance uh, tips and tricks on channel 9, which is kind of like the uh, pretty basic stuff, but it's a good introduction if you're new to Xamarin Forms. And the Xamarin developer documentation isn't too bad either. Um, made more awesome with Mfractor. <laughs> so, any questions?